Order members, we will commence now with questions to the uh, Minister for Culture, Arts and Leisure. And I call Robin Newton. Question number one, Mr Deputy Speaker. Or Mel, at last can call you. Thank you very much, Deputy Speaker. And with your permission, I'll take questions one and two together. The Executive endorsed a proposal to provide £36 million for the sub-regional stadium development for football as a priority area of spend in the next CSR period. My department has developed a strategic outline case for the sub-regional programme, and following the, the Assembly's approval of the 2015-2016 budget, this programme will now proceed and commence in its next stages. Uh, no decisions as yet have been taken on which stadia will develop from this funding. Programme specific details in terms of eligibility criteria, funding strands, funding limits, funding timelines, etc. are currently being finalised. Plans for consultation with key stakeholders are being processed and once finalised the sub-regional programme will be formally launched. I am optimistic that the remaining funding will be approved in due course to allow construction work to start in 2016-17. I call Rob Newton. Thank the Minister uh, for her question. Does the Minister envisage that NIFL will indeed have any role to play in the distribution of the monies? Uh, no, I have heard plenty of rumours uh, on certainly some of the, the concerns that people have raised is that it actually if, NF, if the football national Northern Ireland Football League is allowed to dictate the level of resource and inve investment. Not only will that undermine the AFA, but certainly uh, it will have an impact on groups who, don't, who aren't affiliated to it. I call Alec Eason. Okay, uh, thank the Minister for answers so far. Would the Minister agree with me this could be a real game changer for clubs right across all Irish leagues, uh, um, across the Irish League, and especially the possibility of Bangor Football Club if it's able to apply for, for these? Uh, grants uh, and it will make all the difference for the infrastructure for supporters to come and view the games. I um, congratulate the, minister, the member on getting the pun in in terms of being a game changer, but certainly uh, I mean the, the sub-regional development and even certainly investment that we're looking at thereafter will not only have a huge impact on the facilities that people go to enjoy games, but I believe that with the proper investment, it will actually help attract more people to the games and certainly have a better or provide better opportunities for families to come together to enjoy games. I know some of the complaints, which are across the board for all, for a lot of sporting facilities, but particularly in soccer, are certainly things around toilets, being able to access food, car parking, the basic amenities that you, you're, you, you come to expect that they're sorely lacking. So this certainly will have a huge impact on the clubs you receive in this stage and certainly for other stages that I hope to bring forward in the future for those who apply and, and uh, actually uh, succeed thereafter. I call Colin Eastwood. Uh, Minister for answers thus far. Um, aside from upgrades of, of, of uh, facilities, um, can the Minister tell us how much money has been given to, to clubs in terms of uh, general grounds maintenance, pitch maintenance? Uh, well, the member may appreciate I don't have those figures to hand, but I'm certainly happy to supply them. Uh, I can certainly give them the figures from 2011 until the current date, and if he needs any additional information, he can write to me and I'll happily get that for him. I call Joanne Dobson. Mr Deputy Speaker, could I ask the Minister when she would be in a position to give details of funding which may be available for Portadown and Glenavon football clubs? Um, I anticipate these next lot of questions in relation to funding for soccer will be certainly consistency based. Uh, as I said to uh, Mr Easton and certainly to uh, Mr Newton, that when the, the, the IFA, in conjunction with DECAL, bring forward a sub-regional programme, that I anticipate not only the two clubs that the member has mentioned, the clubs that the previous members have mentioned and the clubs that other members have yet to mention will certainly be a plan to that fund. I call Basil McCrane. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Uh, Minister, this is part of an outworking of an arrangement that included the GAA and the IFA. Uh, do you have any plans to extend it for rugby to see if we can get sub-regional stadium for that sport as well? Well, the member will be aware that I have and still remain in good uh, discussions with the three large uh, governing bodies. This, uh, the sub-regional money for soccer is the remainder of the money that they were awarded to develop at Windsor Park. 
Thereafter, I'm hoping, uh, and I know already, that through the development of the facilities management and facilities, the strategies that both the GAA and Ulster Rugby and indeed uh, the IFA will bring forward, will not only run into the next mandate, but certainly the mandate thereafter. Because the good thing about the three sports is their sports are growing. They're certainly much more inclusive than what they were previously. They're including women, they're including uh, young people and children with disabilities. And because of, there's an increased demand, then there certainly has been an increased investment. But certainly for this period, I'm primarily dealing with in this question sub regional facilities for soccer. Can I advise members that questions 5, 8, 10, and 13 have been withdrawn? I call Trevor Lunn. Uh, Gormay Agat, last time call you cast over a tree to the Minister. That's question 3, Minister. Gormay Agat, uh, thank you very much. Um, I have had no direct discussions with Minister Danny Kennedy um, in regard to improving public transport links to Belfast, the three upgraded uh, sports stadia. However, as part of the planning process for each stadium, Transport and I were consultee regarding the proposed new stadiums uh, and have provided comments and support where appropriate, which has been very helpful. With regards to Windsor Park, I understand that the IFA have met the DRD Minister on a few occasions. Uh, regarding the creation of pedestrian links between the Adelaide Halt train station and the stadium. A plan application has also been submitted for these works on behalf of DRD and TransLink. With respect to Caseman Park, the GA submitted an events management plan along with their plan application for the Caseman Park redevelopment. Uh, this highlighted the TransLink <coughs> excuse me, were agreeable to sitting on the event management board for Caseman. The Ulster Council of GA have also committed to providing an annual uh, 30,000 public transport fund for the first two years of the stadium to encourage public transport travel amongst its supporters, and that's to be welcomed. And finally, in relation to Kingspan, Kingspan Stadium at Ravenhill, uh, previous engagements with DRD, TransLink, and the Irish uh, Rugby Football Union, Ulster Branch, um, have respective team members were, on, were undertaken in order to, to deliver the current park and ride arrangements that they have. I call Trevor Lunn for supplementary. Speaker, I thank the Minister for the answer. Um, she would know there is already a problem around the Kingspan Stadium and trying to get people away from the stadium. And the, whenever casement eventually becomes a reality, it is clearly going to be a major problem there with the increased capacity. So, would you agree with me that it is a matter that needs to be addressed now rather than, than later when the problem actually arises? And perhaps I should be talking to Minister Kennedy and perhaps Minister uh, Durkin about the taxi service. Even. Well, I, I thank the member um, for his supplementary question as well. Um, I mean, the member may be aware that there were some comments made on the December 18th judgment by Judge Horner in relation to some of the aspects of Caseman Park. I do, intend, I do intend to not only talk to Minister Mark H. Darkin, but Minister Kennedy, as I anticipate there will be an application coming in from uh, the Ulster Council of GAA for the redevelopment of Caseman Park. But already, I know that even through the sponsor board programmes, which are made up of the three sporting bodies officials, they also have a, a, an obligation to go and liaise with officials from other departments where problems arise, because it means to say that they get dealt with as quickly as possible. And if they can't, there's an action plan to get the issues resolved. But traffic is one of the things that has certainly caught the imagination and indeed exercised some people to the point where they may feel that the, the facility that was developed within their community, certainly the shine has been taken off as a result of it. I call Gordon Dunn. Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister for her answers today. Can the Minister give us an update on progress on the new entranceway at Boucher Road to improve access to Windsor Park and how that will reduce traffic and the impact on the Lisburn Road and Tates Avenue entrances? Well, <clears throat> as I said in my previous um, answer to Mr Lund, certainly the IFA uh, and indeed I think the Belfast City Council in relation to Olympia Stadia have been talking to Minister Kennedy as well as DRD. Um, it is crucial that these discussions are ongoing. They have uh, had a, a helpful outcome in terms of identifying the problems. And certainly as part of the application, we would have had to submit a very detailed traffic management plan. That traffic management plan was part of the, the IFA receiving the plan and application and plan approval in the first instance. In fairness to the IFA, they have not left at that. They are constantly looking at opportunities to try and get that improved. And indeed, 
I know that other events that have happened in the Boucher Road, albeit not sport related, have been used with the PSNI and others to see how traffic was managed, certainly when they're looking at big crowds, crowds coming into and leaving the vicinity. So I'm happy with the, the discussions thus far and I know they'll be kept under constant watch to make sure that residents who live in the vicinity aren't put out in terms of cars being parked in their streets, in terms of not being able to get in and out of their own homes, because it's very, very important that they're not disturbed. I call Pat Sheehan. I got the last count quarter. Uh, could the Minister inform the Assembly on the current status of the Casement Park project? Um, well, the member will be aware that there was a, a judicial review which was um, decided upon in uh, December of last year. Um, I believe there is a strong resolve within the Ulster Council of the GAA. In fact, you know, they, they ruled on Saturday that there was unanimous support to bring forward the redevelopment of Casement Park. I also have met, along with yourself, but many elected reps from West Belfast um, who are certainly urging DECAL and indeed the Executive to maintain their support for the redevelopment of Casement Park. But as well as that, I've actually met lots of residents, community and voluntary groups, sporting groups, businesses, and indeed the encouragement that I got from the sporting groups, who all weren't from the GA community, were that they're all saying that this development is needed. So the update is I'm anticipating that the GA will bring forward their plans around submitting another plan application and we'll just need to take it from there. But I'm certainly supportive of doing everything I can to assist him. I call Sandra Overend. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. I wonder has the Minister um, designated any other specific areas uh, which could be utilised as, as park and ride uh, facilities to improve traffic uh, flow whenever there's major matches on? Sorry, I'm assuming you're talking about is it Casement Park or Windsor Park or both? Or both? Okay, well... <coughs> There have been park and ride um, facilities that have been identified and will be ongoing in relation to Windsor Park. Um, I mean, that is something that uh, has been very acutely tested as part of not only the plan and approval, but as I explained to Mr Dunn, the review of it thereafter in relation to Casement Park, which is uh, certainly, I mean, the Windsor Park will have up to 18,000 people. Casement Park potentially could have, have up to 32 plus thousand people. So certainly, as part of any new application on behalf of Caseman Park, the traffic management is going to be critical, if not key, to plan and approval. And I certainly would anticipate that uh, the, the, the detail that's needed in order to satisfy any approval will, will need to be increased upon the first application that they put in, certainly where areas of traffic management were identified as being perhaps a weakness. Moving on, I call Tom Elliott. Uh, question number four, Deputy Speaker. Thank the member for his question. The Executive endorsed a proposal to provide funding around, for around £36 million for sub regional development for football as a priority area of spend. The sub regional programme is a logical channel for any potential funding application, and the Brandy Wells Stadium would be one of a number of eligible venues across the north. DECAL has developed a strategic outline case for the sub-regional programme and following the Assembly's approval of the 2015-16 budget, this programme will proceed and commence to its next stages. I am optimistic that the remaining funding will be approved in due course, which will allow construction to commence in 2016 and 17. I call Tom Elliott. Hey, thank the, the Minister for that clarification. I, I did note in recent press reports that uh, Derry City were obviously uh, maybe looking for expansion or, or money for Stadia. Just wondering if the Minister has any idea if that may be subject to moving away from the Brandywell so that Derry City may re enter the Irish League here in Northern Ireland? Um, well, first of all, it's up to Derry City where they play and who they play with and who they play for. It's not a, it's not a matter for me. Um, but the, the Brandywell, Derry City, as has been mentioned uh, by other members, including your own par party colleague, I anticipate many members to raise their feet asking for support uh, for, their, for their own uh, club. But I'm glad that the member is actually supporting the Brandy Wells uh, application for investment. Thank you very much, Deputy Speaker, and can I thank the, the Minister for answer. I hope the fact that Derry City beat Ballon and Mallard 2 now last night has nothing to do with the, sort of, the, the type of question being asked. I, I wonder, would the Minister uh, 
agree with me that whatever development is done around the Brandywell Stadium, it, it's very, very important that it's seen to be part of the Foyle Valley Gateway, which was a catalyst uh, project in the one plan. Uh, yes, well, first of all, yes, I would agree with the member in terms of it is seen. Um, I mean, I have invested in the Foyle Valley Gateway. I have met not only with uh, officials in Derry City Council, but indeed the, the Derry City Football Club and a host of many other sporting and community groups. And the Foyle Valley Gateway is an ambitious plan, and the one plan is even more ambitious than that. But certainly what I liked about all those plans, particularly the one plan, is it actually sets out a direction of travel for investment from the executive in the North West. And I, like I have said here earlier on, a question time would anticipate that Derry would be uh, putting forward an application to sub-regional. I call George Robinson. Mr Deputy Speaker, Deputy Speaker, could I ask the Minister, um, has any uh, financial support been committed for the upgrade of Corian and Limavady United football clubs home ground? Not, not as yet. Um, and as I said earlier, I would anticipate that the member and other members who have been lobbied very heavily within their constituencies would certainly support uh, the clubs bringing forward applications to the sub regional stadium. Thank the member for his question. Uh, certainly, in terms of the IFA designated venues, the sub regional programme is certainly one of the channels for any potential funding application. The executive endorsed a proposal to provide funding of around £36 million for sub regional development for football as a priority area. And DECAL has developed strategic outline business cases for the sub regional programme. The programme specified details in terms of eligibility and funding strands and funding limits, as I said in a previous answer, have yet to be determined, and no decisions have been taken on specific stadia that will benefit from this. I call David Hildage. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and thank the Minister for an answer. A very, a very timely question, as, as this morning I've learned of a, a, a club in my own constituency who may be interviewed under uh, police uh, on the legal. Yep. Uh, so it's a very, very timely question this morning. Will designated stadia throughout the province receive any priority due to the legislation that they actually have to act under due to, due to government regulations? Uh, well, I, I, I understand, and the member also understands that there is a need for designated stadia, particularly in terms of health and safety, and that I know that's something he supports. I think where the gap has been created now is that uh, clubs, individual clubs want to try and meet, if not exceed, their health and safety standards, but aren't financially in a position to do that. So I have heard what not only the member but other people have had to say around this. I would certainly imagine that from sub-regional, but indeed any other funds within DECAV vis-a-vis Sport NI, people would be, and clubs would be approaching us in relation to getting their health and safety standards met through those funding streams. I call Mickey Brady. I got uh, last concordia. I thank the Minister for answers so far. Minister, given your previous comments and plans to develop sub regional facilities, could you outline the current status of the IFA governance situation? Well, I thank the member for his question. He would be aware that some time ago there was an independent review of governance uh, and it was completed and recommendations were accepted uh, by the IFA uh, board. The IFA, uh, I'm very pleased to say, have implemented these recommendations, which allowed DECAL the assurance that appropriate governance has been and continues to be maintained and fully meets the needs of DECAL. So I am satisfied the, F the IFA have made significant progress against all those recommendations, and that informed my decision to allow IFA to proceed with the release of the construction notice for Windsor Park, enabling the construction to proceed. Had I not been satisfied of the governance procedures, Certainly, the IFA uh, were fully aware that Windsor Park wouldn't even start it. I call Leslie Cree. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. The Minister will know that because um, regional stadia funding was returned, the Executive have agreed uh, to consider favourably uh, any in year bids, uh, provided they have the money. Has the Minister drawn up such a list yet, or is she considering that particular issue? Well, I haven't drawn a list of uh, clubs. Certainly, I know what the financial portfolio is and the needs are around the sub-regional stadia and, indeed, the continuation of the, the stadia. Of course, bearing in mind, the money that was returned also includes Windsor Park, 
I have met with and dis had these discussions with uh, Simon Hamilton, Minister for Finance and Personnel. Uh, there is a process that we're, we're, that, which is well underway in terms of drawing those monies down. And the, the Finance Minister does anticipate a bid from my department in relation to making sure the money to complete the stadia and uh, that commence the sub regional stadia happens. Moving on, I call Maeve McLaughlin. I thank the member for her question. Investment by NI Screen and the Arts Council in Film and the Creative Industries in the North West in the last three years exceeds $4.2 million. This funding consists of production, uh, sorry, of uh, funding film, education, film, festival funding and Creative Industries innovation funds, grants and supports my focus on establishing the North West as a key driver for the Creative Industries and um, indeed for wider social innovation. In addition to this, and the member will be aware of this, the DECAL contributed over 12.3 million to the City of Culture uh, in 2013 for projects and events that focused on culture and creativity. These included flagship projects such as the Portrait of a City and the mu Music Promise. This year, a significant amount of uh, one, one million resource budget was secured in the October monitoring round and has been allocated to organisations supporting creative industry sector in the North West. This includes places like a nurse centre and its creative learning activities, the Fab Lab programmes and organisations such as Culture Tech and others have received funding to help increase their capacity to support skills and development. A number of NI screen funded productions such as Dracula Untold, The Game of Thrones and Jump have also used the North West as a film location to further boost in the local economy, raising the profile and actually helping local tourist industry. I call Maeve McLaughlin for supplementary. Sure, well, good. And I, I thank the Minister for that and I thank the Minister for the, the, the investment, the particular role that, that she herself has played in relation to uh, the City of Culture and investment in the North West generally. Can I ask the Minister then just maybe to outline how the development of cultural hubs will actually um, have benefit to the communities uh, in Derry and the wider North West? Thank you. Well, again, I thank the member for a supplementary question and the, the cultural hubs. Um, really is making sure that it is multi-community and multi-purpose uh, based. It can, it can look at things like sport and physical activities, it can look at virtual community infrastructure, it's looking at networks. But in the main, the principle behind it is making sure that investments that are particularly under the, 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 the responsibility of DECAL, such as libraries and museums and sports and or arts venues, are actually brought together to make sure that they provide an overall and wraparound service. And indeed, some of these venues can be used for other activities. So, for example, the libraries could host films, could host discussions, uh, rather than actually using a theatre or anything else. Particularly in the rural uh, areas of the North West, it's important that those services are available to as many people as possible. I call Nelson McCausland. Um, Thank you, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker. The film and creative industries are hugely important in terms of job creation and our economy. Um, would the minister uh, recognise then the uh, opportunities that arise in her own constituency with the arrival of the University of Ulster, with all of the creative energy around that, and the potential even to develop some activity in regard to film and creative industries in that area uh, as the university comes on site? Um, absolutely. The the investment of the Ulster University, um, certainly in York Road, and indeed neighbouring the Cathedral Quarter, one of the most vibrant parts of the city in our constituency, uh, and indeed even using the Library Quarter as well um, as potential sites for not only, I suppose, to encourage and nurture the creative industries that are currently there, but also to encourage others to invest there. So certainly we have an opportunity in North Belfast to look at the redevelopment and the investment from university, which I believe will attract other creative industries and other crafts and artists to that uh, sector and indeed to that uh, geographical area, which is to be welcomed. I call Karen McKevitt. Mr Deputy Speaker, can I ask the Minister what support her department has given uh, an offer to the development of the Irish language independent production sector? Well, the member will be aware, um, certainly through the Irish language broadcast funds, that there, there are programmes, documentaries and training and apprenticeships built around those funds. Uh, it has caused me concern that the funds at times would seem to be vulnerable because you know, they end one year and then you get an, another year's extension. 
Uh, so that's an issue, and that's an issue I've already started the process from last year to try and get those further secured. But not only to have them secured, but also to point out that within those funds, both the Irish Language and the Ulster Scots Broadcast Funds, there needs to be more local film production and procurement because local television documentary and filmmakers uh, need to make sure that they have opportunities to benefit. That isn't the same people from one front stream to another that benefit. Moving on, I call Morris Devaney. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Question nine. Thank the member for his question. Uh, I commi I'm committed to supporting the development of cultural hubs as part of my department's focus on the Northwest development after the City of Culture in 2013. I want communities to have local access to equipment and support which allow people of all ages to develop new skills, have, have access to cutting edge digital technology, and encourage social uh, enterprise in the hearts of communities. DECAL have identified over a dozen existing community based venues across the North West, including community centres and schools, to be developed as cultural hubs. These venues are in the context of significant need where provision is inadequate or indeed at times non existent. The Nurse Centre is working with ven venues to refine equipment and training needs. The programme will roll out uh, until the end of uh, next March, and venues will be provided with equipment such as digital technology, software, music making, and film editing equipment. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I thank the Minister for her answer. Um, would the Minister agree that it is vital that these hubs are sited um, within sites that every community can use? And would the Minister um, consider the Abrington site for one of these hubs, seeing the Abrington site is very much a neutral site? Thank you. Um, uh, well, certainly the Abrington site has benefited from a lot of investment across all departments. But the members hinting or suggesting that the development of these cultural hubs isn't done uh, in a way that is per to damn people access, and I would refute that. There are certainly some of these cultural hubs not only developed in the city of Derry, but indeed the North West, which are based within communities which all people can access. If the member has any particular concerns about a particular group or an area, I'm happy to meet with him or uh, to accept uh, his correspondence, and I'll certainly get back to him. I call John Dallet. The Speaker, agree with me that Derry City is an example to the world and how different communities can actually share their culture together, and would she accept that they're a model for the rest of Northern Ireland to emulate orange men, princess boys, Hibernians, it doesn't matter who they are, they have this unique capacity to share their culture and have shown the world in 2013 how it could be done. I thank the member for supplementary. Certainly, I mean, I'm a North Belfast girl, uh, born and raised there. But I have a lot to learn from the city of Derry, and I think many people across the island have a lot to learn from the city of Derry. So if each of us can take a wee, a wee piece of that and bring it on our constituencies, well, then that's a good thing. I call Joanne Dobson. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Question number 11. Thank the member for her question. In the three financial years, up to 31st of March 2015, my department through Sport and I has provided over £646,000 to promote cycling. In addition to funding, the Sports Institute provides special support to talented local cyclists in the form of sports medicine, performance skills, lifestyle management, performance analysis, strengthening and conditioning. This investment has resulted in success at international competitions for local cyclists. Events such as last year's Euro d'Italia have boosted a local interest in cycling, and I am very keen to capitalise on the growing popularity through increased participation. DECAL has also provided £10,000 for VC Glendale Cycling Club to deliver a cycling training and participation programme for children from the Shankill and Colin areas of Belfast. This is part of DECAL's Birthplace and Fire Games legacy. I call Joanne Dobson. Can I thank the Minister for her answer, but specifically to focus on mountain biking and cyclocross. Is the Minister aware that those competing in these disciplines do not receive funding, and will she take steps to ensure parity of esteem when it comes to funding each cycling discipline? Well, I, I mean, the Member has raised uh, points that I'm, I'm not familiar with, but certainly what I'll do is I'll, I'll ask for the detail on that and happily furnish the Member with those details. 
but it's hard to describe how they have staying between different brands of cycling, particularly when you haven't got the details. So I'll wait and see what they are, and then I'll make my judgment. But I'll certainly keep the member informed. And that is the end of the period for list questions. And we now move on to topical questions. And I call Cahill Boylan. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Um, the Minister is well aware of the Inakwaka Kultalan project in Armagh. Could the Minister please give us an update on that project? Um, I am indeed aware of the project in Armagh to develop a Kultalan type project. Uh, in terms of an update, the member may be aware that uh, some uh, 150, uh, £150,000 was earmarked. Uh, to develop the site pending the successful outcome of the business case. We are still working through the issue of the business case, but certainly that was an indicative figure that we hope to invest in that area. I call Cahill Boylan for supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and thank the Minister for her answer. But following on from that, the Minister is well aware of the amount of time and effort that has been put in this project. Would the Minister give a commitment to keep me updated? Uh, and further updated on this project because it's vitally important to our mass city and district. Gormil Magad. Uh, certainly, the, uh, I, the last part of the member's uh, supplementary first, I will uh, endeavour to keep the member updated. I do agree with them that it is important that this project is resolved uh, and it is the, the construction starts. Uh, but certainly, the member will appreciate and indeed the people who are involved in the development um, of this investment and this uh, application are well aware of the requirements from DECAL and are very positive and proactively working their way through all the elements and all the additional information that is required. I call Bronwyn McGahan. Can the Minister provide details on how Sports NA and the governing body will develop the sport of cycling in the future? I thank the member for her question. I know she is a, a keen cyclist. Um, certainly, Sport NA have given significant uh, support to cycling. Uh, but certainly even in terms of development for the future, it's one of the areas that have uh, seen an increased demand. And I know that Sport and I, through their work, there were the, the grassroots community groups and indeed some of the cycling clubs and governing bodies around this, have taken on board uh, what a lot of people are saying. And I do think that some of our athletes who performed over the years, particularly around cycling, have inspired people to get involved. So certainly Sport and I, and indeed my officials, are more than aware of the increased demand around cycling. I call Bronwyn McGann for supplementary. Gurmi Ogadan, I thank the Minister for her answer. Will the Minister ensure that the lack of facilities in rural areas will be considered, as well as encouraging more women into the sport? Certainly will, and the member may be encouraged to know that certainly a lot of the, the groups and the individuals that I have spoken to have all been from rural communities. Uh, I've absolutely no doubt that sport and I have received the same, if not similar, representation. And the whole area around rural uh, communities has been highlighted because that's one uh, facility that uh, we have on our doorsteps, our own natural environment, and we need to use it better. And if we can use it through the development of sport and physical activity, then all the, all the more. I call Leslie Cree. Thank you again, Deputy Speaker. Um, I wonder, could the Minister give us an update on the full uh, quality impact assessment on the savings proposals she intends to carry out for the current budget year? Uh, I'm not in a position to give the member an update um, yet because we're still going through uh, the process of not only looking at the uh, responses to the consultation but the whole equality impact assessment process. Uh, the members on the, the, the CAL committee and in the first instance they will receive the report and the outcome of that uh, but certainly that's something that I expect to see in the very, very near future. Well, Leslie, yes, for um, continue to push my look, Deputy. Speaker, um, I wonder then, uh, can the Minister reassure us that she is still wedded to her decision uh, to ensure that libraries do not close as a result of the budget cuts? My commitment today that to ensure that libraries do not close. I understand that some of the libraries may face a slight reduction in their opening hours, but certainly my decision to protect libraries as much as possible. Now, I know other ALBs within DECOL are unhappy. With that, but certainly uh, my commitment to protect libraries as much as possible still remains. 
I call Peter Weir. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Can I ask the Minister, given the cross cutting nature of some of the issues contained within that, what level of executive approval was sought uh, before issuing the consultations on both the Irish language and Ulster Scots strategies? Well, there's a huge amount of uh, consultation across the departments. In fact, the member is more than welcome, like any other, anybody else, to look at the publications which are on the DECAL website. The Minister, why the strategies themselves were then issued without uh, approval on those strategies by the Executive? The strategies and the consultation and the outworkings of the consultation were all brought uh, for the attention of Executive colleagues. If some people slept in and missed that, that's not my problem. I call Robin Newton. Can I ask, the, can I ask the Minister how, is she ensure, how she is ensuring that there is adequate funding for um, the uh, community festivals and in particular how she is expecting to fund the East Side Community Festival? Well, certainly the, the, the role in which festivals play is a very, very important one and the member will know certainly the, the work of the East Side Arts is very, very important, not only just the East, east of the City. I mean, Eastside uh, are part of some of the cultural partners we've been working together for the last couple of years, particularly around work workplace and fire games. They have shown very, very clearly, as have other groups involved in arts and creativity and festivals, that with a small investment there's a big outcome. That's the sort of work I hope that not only Arts Council, but certainly local councils, in this case Belfast City Council, will also support. I call Rob Newton. Would the Minister recognise that <clears throat> the Eastside Arts Festival, as it is now branded, <clears throat> has been developed over the past few years basically on a shoestring and that as such needs investment to ensure that it can catch up with all the other festivals that have a history of success? Well, I'm sure the member isn't suggesting that because other festivals and geographical parts of Belfast have literally you know, used our initiative, got funding for a period of years, built up their performance portfolio and indeed even a reputation that they should be held back in, in order to let say catch up because that's not what he said arts are saying. However, I was the only minister who invested in the East Side Arts. No one else done it. I appreciate it and value the work that they do and continue to do that. I will continue to try and make funding available where possible. But I would encourage the minister to talk to some of his colleagues as well about investing in such a great or funding a uh, funding opportunity not only for their own department but a great organisation who has great outcomes for the community. I call Barry McElduff. Uh, can I ask the Minister, referring back to the publication of her department's strategy on the Irish language and on Ulster Scots culture and heritage, I think it was published last Friday, can I ask the Minister what are the next steps? I thank the member for his question. Uh, the next steps are that my officials will draw an action plan up for each of the recommendations and the commitments that are outlined in both strategies. That will involve other executive ministers. If other executive ministers and ALBs and public bodies feel that they can't adhere to the commitments within those strategies, then that's a matter for them. But certainly I'm drawing an action plan up for both the Irish language strategy and for the strategy for culture. Or for Ulster Scots Culture and Heritage. I call Barry McElduff. Well, I got to thank the Minister for her answer, Goji and Funchy Shaw. And can I further ask the Minister what role, Kane role, the Vague and Group of Shaw, what role will core funded groups have in relation to implementing, particularly the Irish language strategy? What role will core funded groups have? Thank you, again, thank you, Member, uh, for his question. Certainly, I know that, uh, for example, Conrad Nagilga, who is responsible for lobbying and trying to procure the development of services, protect and enhance in the language, they'll have a pivotal role, particularly in relation to local councils, uh, in their responsibility not only to the Irish language but also Scots culture and heritage. I know some of the other groups who are core funded by Force Nagilga will have a role as well. Uh, but certainly, in the first instance, my first contact with one of the six groups has been through Con Conry Nagilga, who uh, at the minute are trying to liaise with the local councils to make sure that they are honouring the commitments that they have to the European Charter, as an example. I call Declan McAleer. Um, uh, could the Minister advise on how DECAL's arm's length bodies could provide a better presence in rural communities? 
Um, well, certainly, I mean, the member was in the chamber when I spoke, certainly about the, the value and the commitment I've made to libraries, and libraries is one of the decal family that we're very keen to ensure uh, not only are the libraries protected, but that people from around the community can use libraries, for example, to show films, to have lectures, to have talks, to have exhibitions and things like that. Schools and others, and I have been talking to colleagues, certainly around where we can provide uh, our best, our resources to provide the best uh, service and outcome for rural communities. So I'm acutely aware that there's a need to get services, particularly in some of the more deprived rural areas. I call Declan McAleer. Uh, Graham, I will thank the Minister for her answer. I'm sure the Minister will agree that libraries and schools are very much the heart of rural communities. And would she be prepared to, uh, to, to, to consider these as potential locations for such events and maybe potentially have a meeting to discuss uh, these propositions? I'm happy to meet the member, indeed any other member for that matter, um, and yes I am. Uh, but just even just to elaborate on the first part of the, the answer I give him, I've also had these discussions with the ALBs. So I have had discussions with arts around what they can do in libraries, about bringing exhibitions, and arts are having discussions with some of the education facilities, higher and uh, further education facilities, uh, and some of the colleges about what we can do to make sure that we use the uh, resources we have to try and bring better services and, and indeed events and initiatives in rural areas. So I'm happy to meet the member to see how we can take it for, further. I call Patsy McLone. Uh, um, I would like to ask the Minister in regard to her recently announced consultation on the Irish language. How many people are employed at the department who have uh, fluency in the Irish language to deal with that consultation? Um, well, certainly the consultation hasn't been launched yet, but even currently within the department there are at least three people who are fluent Irish speakers. I anticipate with the response uh, to the, 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 the draft of uh, the the Irish Language Act, that if I need additional resources, I'll bring them in in order to cope with what I expect to be a big demand. I call Patsy McGlone for supplementary. Okay, uh, um, how many people, you have three people, are those people employed directly in the section that will be dealing with the consultation process? Well, certainly they're working on the Irish language strategy, they're working on the LEAFA programme, and they will be employed directly in this section. They're in, under the languages branch of the, the, the department, so they'll be working there. But the same three people, while they're fluent Irish speakers, as a member will know, I also outsource translation, and I'll out, outsource additional translation uh, to uh, outside companies and bodies. And if I need, I can, outs I can bring in uh, additional expertise as and when they're required. <coughs> Question time has not completed as of yet. Um, Joanne Dobson is not in her place. Paul, I'm sorry, and that is the end of our period of questions to the Minister of Culture, Art and Leisure.